know, thank you very much. I'm going to uh, start. Uh, I decided that since we've been talking about uh, how good the conventional meeting model are, I would just start from the conclusion that uh, Lizzie Kendon presented the last uh, Jervex meeting in Canmore. And uh, what uh, was the funding from uh, a larger domain was uh, a confirmation of what was found also for smaller domain. So we have uh, the convection permitting model improve the representation of precipitation, especially a sub-daily scale in region and season where convection dominates. Uh, the other interesting thing that came out is that uh, uh, two uh, different models with completely different uh, dynamical core and, uh, and physical packages. That is uh, a UK MO, that is the MetOffice model, ETH. Um, run over Europe, show similar results. And so what is missing now at this point is to estimate the uncertainty that, are, that at this uh, convection permitting scale. So in this context, we have the coded uh, FPS that Stefan nicely presented before me. And, uh, and then there is the UKCP18 project that I'm going to talk about. So that is going to be the first ensemble of projection at convection permitting scale. Uh, driven by an ensemble of uh, global climate simulation, 60 kilometer, sampling both model uncertainty and variability. It's run over UK only, a uh, 12 member, and uh, we will allow it to estimate uncertainty at kilometer scale to support the UK risk assessment study. The project is divided in two phases. The first one is to identify a suitable UK domain, resolution, experimental design for the ensemble, and is using ERA interim. And the second phase is obviously to run and to evaluate the ensemble uh, over the UK domain that it was selected in the first phase. So my talk is going to focus on the finding of the first phase, because uh, the release is going to be in spring, summer 2019, and that's when the, the real results will be presented. Uh, so for the optimal configuration of the ensemble, there are at least three factors to, to consider, which resolution we are going to run the simulation, always talking about convection permitting a solution, um, the physical setting we want to use, and obviously the computational cost, and how these three factors interrelate to each other and affect each other. Because obviously increasing the resolution has uh, mean increased computational costs, which actually mean the, the length uh, of the simulation, the ensemble size that you can afford, and uh, the physical setting similarly have a different computational cost. And some of the physical settings are resolution dependent, or might be resolution dependent. So it's like uh, um, giving an example of what we can afford. So if we go for 1.5 kilometer, we can afford only 40 seasonal snapshots, which might not be enough to add the, say anything about climate change. At 2.2, we can afford two slides of 20 years, or 4 kilometer can afford 100 years, keeping always uh, at least 12 ensemble members. So for us, it's not important to understand which of these resolution is better, because we already know that NWP is working on 1.5, and that's the best resolution. So for us, the point is to understand to what extent the advantages of increasing resolution in terms of representation of precipitation outweigh the extra computational cost. So to answer this question, we did a bunch of tests, all run with our interim analysis, all between 96 and 2008 focusing for this presentation in summer and on precipitation. And we divided the test in two parts. First, resolution impact. And we selected um, 1.5 and 2.2. That's what is used uh, for the deterministic ensemble, uh, for the deterministic and the, the, and the ensemble forecast in the NWP mode. And the 4 kilometer because it's cheap. And in addition, we consider uh, the 4 kilometer nested in a 12 kilometer domain over Europe. All these tests run with PS35. Get used to with this PS. These are the uh, operational configuration that are different. They, they change the number, increase number for uh, newer one. So it's more older version. And then for, for the impact of the physical packages, we use, we consider the PS38 that's the current operational configuration. The main difference between PS38 and PS35 is that PS38 use um, a lower mixing length and stronger, greater perturbation, something that Mike was mentioning before. Uh, we also consider, obviously, a, a setting that is more similar to what was in PS35. And then we consider this new conservation scheme um, that uh, allow to remove the excess of moisture 
that has previously created by the semi-Lagrangian vacuum scheme. Obviously, this new uh, configuration are meant to improve the performance of the model in PS35. All these, these uh, tests were performed at four kilometer. Most of these tests were performed at four kilometer and also at 2.2 kilometer to see the impact of the resolution. In addition, at 2.2, we also did the test on the nesting, similar to what was done here. And the four kilometer, we also did a test with the, what is called K closure. It's kind of similar to a shallow convection scheme. We usually don't use any scheme. It's all explicitly resolved. So jumping to the, the results. So here is the, the results for the resolution comparison. And these are the PDF for daily and hourly. Uh, this is just an enlargement of the first part of the curve, because otherwise you don't see anything. And this is uh, the percentage of dry days and dry hours. So in black is observation. I'm going to focus on the hourly, because that's why it's more interesting. So black is observation. The 12 kilometer is in gray. And you can see that, as we know, it's failing and representing hourly statistically, statistics correctly. We have in green the 1.5, and in yellow, orange, uh, the 2.2. They are much better in representing the PDF. Four kilometer in pink is consistently showing higher hourly precipitation intensity. I'm not sure that it's doing any better than the 12 kilometer. But what is interesting is that the nested version is getting much, much closer to the 1.5 kilometer. And we think that that depends on the fact that uh, the nest allow to have uh, at the boundary some more uh, small precipitation with maybe some explicit convection already there that then is easier for the four kilometer to spin out. When we look at the diurnal cycle, um, we have uh, again that uh, this is uh, the gray is the 12 kilometer with the common problem that we know. Black also observation. So it's like this is kind of weird peak, but other data set show the peak more or less where the 1.5 is, so the green one. And now what you see is Green is 1.5, orange 2.2, and pink is, is 4 kilometer. And you see that increase in resolution, you go to a delay in the peak in, uh, in the afternoon peak that is usually related with convection. And this is because the 4 kilometer needs more time to build up the condition to actually trigger convection. This is something that we knew. The interesting thing is that the nested version, although it has the same problem than the 4 kilometer, is the dash one, uh, you can see that the peak in the morning is becoming more important, and that is because of the large scale. So it's like in dashed gray, hope you can see, is the 12 kilometer large scale precipitation, and is similar to what we have in the nest version. Uh, and now some of the results of the physical package comparison. Uh, there are a lot of lines, so try to follow me. These are the PDF on hourly base, both of them. This is the test of four kilometer, and on the other side is the test of 2.2 kilometer. So what is interesting is like, so the, the PS35 is the old configuration, is in pink here. And PS38 is a new physical package with lower mixing and more a greater perturbation is in blue. And what you see is that the PS38 triggers two intense and frequent events without resolving the, pro the, the underestimation of lower intensity that you see here. Um, don't look for this on 2.2, because actually we don't have that one. But uh, so when you, you uh, increase the, the, the mixing length and uh, reduce the perturbation, you get that the black line overlap with the, the pink line, and the same for the yellow and the black. So it's like that was the main point. The, the mixing length and the perturbation are the thing that impact the most. What is interesting for us is the conservation uh, scheme, that is uh, the dashed line, either in blue or in black, reduce. Uh, the probability of uh, intensity above 10 millimeter per day, while they fo favor the lower intensity precipitation. So it's not just fixed, it's actually doing good stuff. Um, although the, the conservation scheme improved the representation of the PDF, it's still the four kilometer here is still highly overestimating the one, what we consider as good, so the, the 1.5 uh, PDF. So it doesn't solve all the problem. Um, the nest of 2.2 that is in dotted over here, it reduced further the probability of higher intensity, which is what we saw also before. So it's 2.2 get the same results than 4 kilometer. When we look at the diurnal cycle, it's like you can see how big is the spread. We're going to go through that. 
And that's given an insight of what, how the process is changing different packages. So it's like the, the, the green line is, let's say, what is kind of reality is the 1.5 kilometer. The pink is, again, the old version of 4 kilometer. And in yellow is, is, is the 2.2. What you see when you pass from the old version to the new configuration PS38, you have a huge jump, which is what you would expect, because we saw that the PDF are overestimating precipitation. But also, there is that, uh, the, the, the kind of the correction initiate much earlier. And that's due to the perturbation that were added. That was why they were added the perturbation. And uh, the other important thing is that uh, the the conservation scheme, so you look, compare the solid line with the dashed line, it, it reduced substantially the mean precipitation intensity, consistent with what we saw in the PDF. And uh, so it's like it gets closer to what we, we would like to see. And this is true for the 4 kilometer, but it's also true with 2.2. So unluckily, we don't have the PS38 without the conservation fix. But you can see the dashed line, that is the new configuration with the conservation fix, it gets a bit, again, it's like the, the peak is a bit earlier, and intensity-wise is similar, which is what we would like to see. Um, the other question was like, uh, is more important to increase the resolution, is more important than the physical packages? So that's what we're trying to, to see here. So it's a bit complicated, but it's, uh, on this side, there is the different PDF between if you look at the black line, this is the difference between the new PS38, the new configuration, and the old configuration. In, in a pink solid line is the difference between the 4 kilometer and the 1.5 kilometer. And in dash is the difference between the 2.2 and the 1.5 kilometer. So what you see is that the, the changes, are, that the difference are, uh, when you change the physical package can be much stronger than the increase in the resolution. And similar, you see in the neuronal cycle, is the same type of changes. So the black line, when the black line is, is bigger, it shows that uh, the impact of the setting are bigger than the impact of the resolution changes. So I think that I'm doing very well with uh, time, which means that I spoke far too fast. <laughs> so the conclusion is that the four kilometer is of the creating too intense precipitation, that it needs a too late, something we knew, while the 2.2 perform quite well, they would say very similar to 1.5. Using intermediate nests can help to overcome the intrinsic difficulty of spinning up convection, especially at 4 kilometer, but also through a, a 2.2. There is a huge impact of uh, the mixing length and the perturbation on the results. Uh, the mass conservation is very important beside the philosophical reason to apply it, but also because get much better results. As uh, overall, conclusion, uh, something that uh, it might be clear, but I like to underline again, um, the added value to uh, become smaller and smaller every time that you increase um, the, the resolution, talking about convection permitting, uh, but the computational costs substantially increase, increasing the resolution. The other thing is that the change in the physics configuration, at least what we tested, might have as big impact as increasing the resolution. So it's something that one needs to consider as well, not just increasing this resolution with solve all, all our problems. That's not true. And last thing that for us is important is that the changes that we saw, changing the, the, the different packages at 4 km are the same as at 2.2, less strong, but still there. So for us, it's important because that means that we can use 4 km to, for testing, and it's much cheaper, and we have the possibility to test more. And to conclude, I'll give you a flavor on what I would have liked to present to you. <laughs> so that is the kind of idea on what is going to be UKCP18. So in the end, we decided to go for 2.2 kilometer resolution. We are going to go for a reduced mix mixing length with the mass conservation and nested on 12 kilometer. So we are going to have the GCM, uh, the RCM, and the CPM for 12 member. Actually, there are a bit more, but we had to discard some. <laughs> discard some. And we are going to manage to afford, uh, we actually managed to afford three time slice. So 1980 to 2000, 2020 to 2040, and 2060 to 2080. And that obviously is going to be uh, used for, for climate impact study as well. And I think that's it. <laughs> So
sorry, Georgia. Um, I, I have a kind of three different questions. So I don't know which one I started, but, but I'm trying to be fast. Do you analyze the, the sensitivity if you put the, the, the eastern border much more inside to the Atlantic to cover much more better the, the storm track and so on? No, it's like, uh, it's like we are really in contact with NWP. Okay. So it's like uh, this was the old uh, UKV domain. Mm -hmm. Now the, the NWP is using a much larger domain, but toward the south. So if anything, you would have to extend the domain south. Not to the east? To the east, no. Ah, sorry, to the west, sorry. To the west. Yeah. To the west, this was found of being OK. If you decrease it even more, then you miss all the precipitation coming here, true. But this was found to be acceptable. The problem is really events that come from here that are highly convective are rare, luckily, <laughs> but they are convective and they're very strong. In fact, like when you look at mean precipitation, we have a, a, a dry bias.